The thing about shingles is that in someone whose immune system is pretty good, usually the virus kind of ekes out and reactivates in a very predictable pattern where it will be kind of like a linear rash and it looks kind of like you would imagine a little tiny stripe of chicken pox would because it's the same virus. But your immune system gets savvy to it and starts to fight it so it only stays in one localized area. But then, you know, people say, well, if you have sores on your skin, you must be contagious, you know, and unless you're like rubbing your your blisters on a newborn baby, you're really not going to, you're not going to spread that virus to anyone else because your immune system has kept it under control. And, you know, people often ask about, you know, should a grandparent who has shingles be like holding their grandchild and things like that. And most people, because they're on the vaccination trail, have been exposed to it at some point, don't have to worry about this being contagious like a true herpes infection or like chicken pox would be. What's new in shingles, basically, when a patient comes into your office who's over the age of 60, almost all of them have heard of the shingles vaccine. So I think recently the talk of the vaccine is going to be what's on people's minds. Number one, is it covered and how much does it cost? Which is funny because you, you wouldn't think that'd be their first question. But um, the next question is, should they get it? And if they get it, will they never get shingles? And should they tell their parents, grandparents, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, what, what's the difference? And the big thing is, over the age of 60, I recommend it to everyone. Um, there's an asterisk there when it comes, you know, if someone has HIV or they're on chemo, you know, you're not going to give them a live vaccine. But when it comes to the things that this vaccine can do, only about 20% of the population that is eligible to get the vaccine is actually getting it. So if there's any word we can get out when it comes to that, it's mostly that if you're eligible to get it, its advantages are that it keeps your risk of getting shingles down, which is basically a reactivation of the chicken pox virus you had when you were little. Um, and most people who know someone that's had shingles, especially elderly people, know that it's painful, but can actually have pain manifestations into decades later where they're being managed with big time medications just to deal with that. So it not only decreases the incidence of, of getting shingles for, for a population, but it also makes the pain and the long-term sequela from that a lot more manageable. And so, you know, I've told everyone over 60, they should get it. And actually it's safe for patients over 50, it's just a lot of times people have to pay out of pocket, but most insurances, including Medicare, are covering it. Most people um, have had either a chicken pox or the chicken pox vaccine. And if you've had to go to school, or if you've worked in healthcare, or if you've been pregnant in the United States, everyone is kind of screened for that. So for adults, you either were exposed to you're exposed to either one. Um, someone who's never, ever, ever, ever been exposed to either means that if they get exposed to something chickenpox like, they're gonna get full on chickenpox. So the reactivation of chickenpox, which is shingles, happens decades later when perhaps your immune system is taking a little nap. And it can happen in lots of different ages. I've actually had it, I had it when I was pregnant. And uh, so it's something that has absolutely nothing to do with the ill or infirm or immunocompromised. It's more something that people need to think about in, in most risk groups? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. When it comes to decreasing the incidence of, of shingles, it's actually about two thirds, um, which is really big for a population where you would say about one in five people who are 80 would get shingles, and it's probably getting to be about half at this point because people are living longer and healthier lives. Um, but when it comes to making the pain and the length of symptoms and the risk of neuralgia for their lifetime less, it's getting up into the 70, 80% range. Really, no. When it comes down to vaccines, there's always a risk of being allergic to one of the preservative components. Um, people always wonder, you know, like the flu shot, if I get the shingles vaccine, will I accidentally get shingles or will it make me more at risk for shingles? I had a cousin's brother, sister's, you know, dog who that happened to, but you know, it, it's, it's more that the vaccine strains that they're using are safe. And when it comes to the risk of getting shingles, um, you know, the, the, the risk benefit ratio is so obvious for this particular vaccine that we're just getting the word out there. They know about it, and probably this shows up in a general practitioner's office more often than it does in ours, because if you call up and need to be seen because you have this rash that just showed up, the chances of you getting in to your family doctor or to the ER are going to be much higher than getting in to see us. When we get involved is when the 
primary care doctors aren't sure if that's what it is, and sometimes that can be because it doesn't look classic, or if it gets to the point where they need to be admitted to the hospital. So sometimes if you have shingles around the eye, you need to have dermatology and ophthalmology and sometimes neurology involved because it, it can affect the, the CNS as well. But um, if your immune system is robust, then it's not going to do something that would kill you. But the symptoms moving on, if it's not treated appropriately within the first couple of days, can be a big deal. And so, you know, when we teach, we try to, you know, teach your audience. And here at, at the AAD, we're teaching to mostly dermatologists, but also advanced practitioners. And so it's more that I'm not going to tell them how to diagnose it. I'm going to tell them what's new. But we use these same premises to talk to conferences in the coming months to primary care doctors, too.